Good morning, Neil. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Thank God it's Friday. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Friday today. So, so what's your plan for the weekend? Plan for the weekend? Mm -hmm. Crash. Oh, my God. Just sleep throughout the weekend. Have fun, Nyamgul. It's Friday. Yeah, but You're supposed to go out and have fun. But how do you define fun? Well, sleeping it, can be fun, though. It's, I can't so, even lie. So, thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Because, you know, I... I, I have two left legs, uh, as they say. Oh I, I can't dance. Mm. I, I don't drink alcohol, so mm -hmm. definitely I'll be useless in a club or, <laughs> or any regular party and all that. So mm -hmm. um, we can mostly is sleep, first of all, and regain your strength, and mm -hmm. then, you know, do a little bit of writing oh, on nice. reading and that's all nice. that. So Some, that's fun for me. Yeah, something I'm excited for that is going to be fun for me is going salsa. I'm going salsa. Damn. You're going salsa. Yeah. You're going salsa. Yes, I've done that one time, and it was really fun. It was really, really fun, and so I'm looking forward to salsa. Will have to do with you, you know, being soft and and, and doing all those ones. For me, I, I can't do it. You have to. You can. You can. You'll, can, you'll have to sprinkle some water on me. There's nothing you cannot do. You'll like have you to sprinkle some water on me. I I think I'm very stiff. <laughs> no, I'm sure you can. Really? As long as you you know learn the steps and have some classes and you're fine i've done two classes so far although it's been so a long I need time to go I for classes before i could do no, salsa. no 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 so the salsa dance they always have like classes where they're teaching you the steps so that works and then you dance simple it's not that difficult don't make it difficult i'm sorry for my partner <laughs> in future <laughs> that i will be stepping on like every every mm. step i take and no, all that. you make mistakes but then you get over it and you get better see mm -hmm. who is talking you know yeah. <laughs> All right, it's Friday the 27th, or to rather the 28th of June 2024. <laughs> yes, yeah, the 28th of June 2024. The, the month is almost over. In fact, on Sunday, the month is over. By Monday, we're saying Happy New Month to you. But let's focus on today's breakfast show. On today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which Niger Delta communities threatening to cripple oil production over Kanu's continuous detention. Another is talking about men's health. It is Men's Health Month, and we're trying to understand the importance of health checks for men. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. In between goals is a thin, cold life that has to be lived and enjoyed. And that is by Seed Caesar. In between goals is a thin, cold life that has to be lived and enjoyed. And that's just what we're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. you know, going into the weekend, finding things that are fun, mm -hmm. fun activities. I know life can be stressful. There are so many things that could just happen to your day. And you're just like, nah, I'm not having it today. <laughs> but even with all of that, even with all of the goals and dreams that you set for yourself, still bask in the moment. That's what this quote is saying to me. Still bask in the moment. Still enjoy life. Don't just come and you know mark time you should be able to say i lived and these are the moments i have created memorable moments so live and enjoy your life there are people who have capital projects all their life every mm -hmm. time there's a capital project that they're saving for mm -hmm. and then they have a headache they don't buy paracetamol oh they God. have something that is very very serious and they don't take it seriously because mm -hmm. that is not adding to what they've been saving for mm -hmm. uh, and you just find out I, I know a lot of people who have had these dreams and died, unfortunately, and left the dreams because they didn't want to take them. care of themselves. Mm. That's extreme, but yeah. it does happen because you have a goal that you have set for yourself. You think that there's nothing in between. Uh, you, you, you neglect yourself, you neglect your friends, you neglect your, family. your families and all that. And, but it's, it does not worth it at the end of the mm -hmm. day because when you arrive at your goal, the things that you have missed in between will make your goal not as enjoyable as you thought it would be. Yeah, because I think basking in the moments and enjoying those moments is even what makes it more memorable. Life is today, not tomorrow, yeah. not yesterday. It's because today. It's, uh, and don't get us wrong. Like It's nice to have those goals because mm -hmm. if you do not have them, then you're, you're, not, not, aiming, alive, yes. yeah, you're not aiming for anything. Um, and you w everybody wants to be successful. But in that pursuit of being successful do not forget yourself mm -hmm. and do not forget that exactly. you need to live in the moment and be happy 
happiness is free it just depends on how you look at it and if you decide that you want that mm -hmm. so for me it could be going salsa dancing for you it's sleeping for another person it's reading a book but just make sure that you are present in the moment yeah and that's oh. quite important oh the salsa expert <laughs> And uh, my, so my oh friend, my, my friend goodness. would say a motivational speaker. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, I don't know what that means, but you know. But the yeah. moment uh, today is the greatest gift that you can ever have. So mm -hmm. if you miss the opportunity, then it's. How do they say that? Make hay while the sun shines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Anything that you want to do, make sure you're doing it today, enjoying today, because you're not promised tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you do not want to regret that, saying, I wish, I wish I lived more. I wish I enjoyed more. I wish I went out more. I wish I showed my family how much I love mm -hmm. them more. I wish I picked up my phone to call that person more. I so even wish I took more risks than, yes. than, than, than yeah. I did. Yeah, so make sure that you're enjoying life. You're living life to the fullest enjoying it those goals don't worry you will be able to crush them when the time comes mm. all right let's move over to our top trending stories this first one says cholera federal government shopping for emergency vaccines the federal government is in talks with global alliance for vaccines and immunization gavi for emergency supplies of the oral cholera vaccines ocd this action is due to a cholera ad outbreak in nigeria amid a global shortage of the vaccine the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, reported an increase in cholera cases and deaths across 32 states and 115 local government areas. Nigeria uses WHO pre-qualified oral cholera vaccines, Ducoral, Sanchol, and Uvicol Plus. Full protection requires two doses of any of the three vaccines administered to high-risk individuals. NCDC emphasizes the importance of environmental cleanliness and proper hand hygiene alongside vaccination. There is a global shortage of cholera vaccines due to high demand, poor sanitation, inadequate clean water, and limited healthcare infrastructure exasperate uh, the spread of cholera in uh, Nigeria. NCDC has intensified public health campaigns emphasizing hygiene practices and clean water. Despite these measures, inadequate vaccination coverage hampers efforts to control the outbreak. Nigeria received over 3.5 million doses of cholera vaccines in 2021 and requested an additional 9 million doses in 2022. NCDC's emergency operations include a multidisciplinary, multi-sectoral response involving various ministries and international organizations. Lagos State has been proactive in controlling cholera through incident command mechanisms and surveillance systems. The Lagos State Consumer Protection Agency mandates supermarkets to display ex essential products information to help curtail the spread of cholera. Poor sanitation practices and open defecation are major contributors to cholera outbreak in Nigeria. Nigeria is known for widespread open defecation, which leads to contamination of water sources during the rainy season. Efforts are being made to improve the sanitation and hygiene practices to prevent future outbreaks. Mm. Cholera. <clears throat> I know, I mean, we cannot overemphasize the fact that we need proper hygiene, right? I remember when COVID broke out. In fact, well, not before COVID, Ebola, right? And then you're like, oh, you have to make sure that you cook your food properly. You have to make sure that you wash your hands. You have to make sure you have proper hygiene. It's funny how when something happens, we remember hygiene. Mm. But the moment, you know, we're like, oh, you know what? We can let off the hook a bit and we forget proper hygiene. Mm. And, you know, talking about <clears throat> open vacation, of course, when you do that, I feel like that's barbaric first, and I'm sure there are laws against that because even in the past, you will see some signs that says, you know, do not do that here, do not urinate in this place and all of that. But we don't understand that what feces can do to the water sources because there are people who are, I, I was saying the other day, there was a man who was washing fruits with like gutter water. There are people who that's are that crazy, normal. yes. There are people who are that crazy and they're using, you know, contaminated water. And imagine someone who had gone to, you know, defecate in, in such a place. So you don't even know what you're eating. So it is important that we really look at what we eat, the kind of restaurants we visit. 
the type of water that we're even using in our homes um, to ensure that it is not contaminated. But I love the fact that the federal government is trying to ensure that we have vaccines. But I don't think vaccines would just, because regardless of taking a vaccine against cholera, we still need to look at hygiene. And if we're not doing <coughs> so much, if maybe some form of campaign, awareness and all of that, if we're not doing so much, then guess what? And there's going to be another outbreak. It's not cholera now. It's not going to be cholera then, rather, but something else. Well, I, I, was, I, I took a train ride yesterday, and I was just, just absorbing the scenery uh, as we went. I, I like doing that. And I saw a group of young boys and girls swimming in the most ungodly kind of water body mm. that, uh, you know, the train was going towards, uh, um, I don't know how they call that place, it was going towards mile two. Uh, but you could see that's where the fruits that they couldn't sell are being dumped. Mm. Which you could n see that that is the public toilet for everybody. You could see that this, that's the dirtiest Ew. kind of place that a person could ever step foot on. But the children, we're swimming in it. Now, it's, it's good to do campaign, but how much campaign can you do when uh, you cannot direct the people's attention to something else? For instance, you're talking about hygiene, water, the kind of water that you drink, mm -hmm. when there is no provision at all mm -hmm. for public water supply. It has to be someone's borehole that in most cases they're selling the water. If you see a pump outside, that means they're selling. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's within that compound. Not everybody can have access to that. And a lot of people are on the streets, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. So when these people come down with cholera, who do you blame? Themselves? Because they, they one, they don't have the money to buy um, water that is a, a bit clean, clean because mm -hmm. I wouldn't say the pure water we have and all that I 100% clean, but at least it's tolerably clean. Mm -hmm. They don't have the money and they cannot find a source of water that they can use or even take their baths. You ima imagine these children bathing in that kind of water. There's no way you'll tell me 100% some water will not enter their mouths. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. Swimming, or yeah. eyes or ears or anywhere that it can penetrate and get into them. So when they get sick, who covers them? Who takes the data? And then there's, and then there's kind of no place. proper, you Nothing. know, there's no health Nothing. system that caters for them even when they fall sick. No. So you go to Bega. I always use that because that is the craziest place I see this open defecation. When you're entering Lagos, it's as if you're seeing polka dots everywhere. Oh my and when you find out, you climb the bridge, you find out this is what people are doing. And then you ask yourself, why are they doing it? First of all, it is allowed for people to be on the streets in Lagos because these are the ones who collect the toll for them. Mm. You see, these people we call the touts are the ones that go around, they collect these monies from the motorists and all that, and they do returns to whoever they do the returns mm -hmm. to. So it's so allowed in, in Lagos State. But these people do not have the facility for defecation. So mm. they will use the, the available thing. Space they so see. people sleep in the parks. Here in Lagos, there are people who have not gone to their houses for days or for weeks. They are in the park. That's where they sell. That's where they make their living. And when you go, they are sleeping on the pavement or something and covering themselves with waterproof. We see that. So these people have no place. They are going for toilets they are the, where they, that they can bathe and all that. So these things will continue to happen. Mm. So as a government, I'm expecting that you're talking about hygiene. Which is not, like you said, it's not only cholera. It could be something yeah, else. Even Ebola yeah. <coughs> was associated with unhygienic yeah, environments. And yeah. all that. Well, I'm expecting government to say, okay, we have a, a, an aggressive program mm. on water supply, for yeah. instance. I mean, because I spoke about like, yeah. how there used to be like a water board you know, in the past, before before people started creating their boreholes, the government used to provide water, and I wonder what happened to that. Even in the 60s, 50s, they had public water supply. It is yeah. not there anymore. And now, another thing they should do is to have public toilets. But guess what? Lagos State Government says there was going to be public toilet, and they went outside to contract a firm to come and do public toilets. And you know that if a, an outside firm, for instance, comes to do a hundred units of these public toilets. It will cost at least ten times what a local um, yeah. local company could have done. Mm -hmm. Maybe because they will actually spend the money, or because someone somewhere 
wants a name that will give him the opportunity to cut some things and put mm. and keep, give to himself. So, so it's a crazy thing. Yeah. So what money you could have used to have maybe a thousand units of toilets, you're giving to a foreign company to give you a hundred or to give you 50. How crazy can that be? Mm. So we'll, we'll be facing this. 29 people out of 53 at the time I heard the news. I don't know how, what the figures are right now, but there were 29 who had died in Lagos out of 53 that was nationwide. Mm. So there's a big problem in Lagos yeah. State, if not any other place, but in Lagos State there's a big problem and the government should do something about that and I not agree. just tell people to be yeah. hygienic. I mean make provisions as well. So uh, campaign awareness is good, but also make provisions for, other, for you know, all of the water supply, things that we need, you know, just to make sure that we're healthy. Is important. All right, another top trending story says federal government rolls out one trillion naira palliative massive construction project. President Bola Tinubu has directed state governors to provide feedback within seven days on plans to enhance food production in their states. This directive was given at the 142nd National Economic Council meeting in Abuja. Tinubu announced a national construction and household support program which includes 50,000 Naira grants for three months to 100,000 families in each state, 155 billion Naira for sorted foods, 540 billion Naira for household grants, 10 billion Naira allocations to each state and the federal capital territory for CNG buses. These initiatives are a part of a broader strategy to address economic challenges such as high inflation and food insecurity exacerbated by fuel subsidy removal and exchange rate depreciation. Tinubu emphasized the importance of boosting food production, creating jobs, and generating wealth through domestic consumption and exports of high quality food. Additional plans to strengthen the economy include boosting agricultural productivity, creating opportunities in agriculture, manufacturing, and construction, and providing urgent economic relief. The National Construction and Household Support Program prioritizes major infrastructure projects like the Sokoto Badagri Highway, the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, the Trans Saharan Highway, full counterpart financing for the Port Harcourt Meduguri Railway, and the Ibadan Abuja segment of the Lagos Kanu Standard Good Railway. <laughs> The Sokoto Badagri Highway project is significant to its impact on agricultural stability, sustainability, involving 216 agricultural communities, 58 dams, seven agro industrial zones, 456 local government areas, 39 commercial cities and towns, and over 1 million hectares of arable land. Other initiatives include one-off allocation of 10 billion naira for the procurement of CNG buses um, and the CNG uplift program, delivery of 50,000 naira uplift grants to 100 families, um, 100,000 families per state for three months, deployment of 155 billion naira for the purchase and distribution of assorted food nationwide. The meeting also discussed the new minimum wage, but no resolution was reached. The NEC will continue consultations with stakeholders before submitting a proposal to the National Assembly. The federal government approved a hundred or one billion dollar agricultural mechanization program, setting up a hundred or rather one thousand agro sector service providers with tractors. This plan involves partnership with Don John Deere, Tata, Belarus Tractors to supply 2,000 tractors annually for the next five years. Governor Hope Uzodima of Imo State mentioned that the NEC directed a subcommittee on crude oil theft to provide comprehensive recommendations in the next meeting. All right, I think that's enough about the story. Um, you know, CNG bosses of 50,000 to 100,000 families for three months. One question I keep asking is, why are we having stopgap measures? Why can't we, you know, look for things that are sustainable, like sustainable measures, long-term plans that we're saying this is how we want to improve our economy. This is how we want to make sure that we can put food on the table for families. It's not handing out 50,000 naira for the next three months. So what happens after the three months? Well, anything palliative, as far as I'm concerned, is calm. 
maybe the intention of the federal government may not be a scam, but we are definite that the people who are going to carry that out will be scamming us. Um, <laughs> if you've ever been to a political rally, people will pack their jeeps. And then after the rally, maybe the, the House of Assembly member or, or, the, or the House of Representatives member Whoever is there as the big man, per, per se, might drop like 100,000. If you see the people that clamor for a share of this 100,000, mm -hmm. you'll be shocked. It's not even the poor people, but these people who packed their jeeps. Everybody wants to have one 5,000 from there or 10,000 from mm -hmm. there because it, political money, so to speak, seems to have some kind of spirit that everybody just follows Once, around. Yeah. So, so, when you say palliatives, you're going to definitely give to this people. You're not going to give to a system that will make it uh, reach the people that need it. And by the way, how many people need it? Who is it that, what data do they even have for the to people know that, the, the exact that need it? 100,000 so people, families that need it. I come from a village. How many people in my village are going to have it? How do they know the people that are supposed to have it because they are not there? We don't even have a local government. Uh, we don't have councillors that work. We don't have anything uh, there. So how do they even have the data to do all this? When I hear palliatives, I think it's always something that uh, just puts me off because palliatives don't work in Nigeria. Mm. If you want to give, you want to spend a billion naira on some families, I would rather have you buy the CNG buses immediately for that 10 billion naira that you're going to spend and make transportation so, so simple for everybody. Mm -hmm. Maybe like the NLC is talking about 250,000, you have buses that will be moving from here to the east, from here to Abuja and all that. And you say, if you come with your card and you show that you are a, a civil servant or a worker in any place, mm -hmm. you are paying half the price. Yeah. I won't be clamoring for anything that I'm talking about yeah. right now. Because I know that if I want to travel, I can go. Mm -hmm. If I want to go on a plane, maybe because I'm a, a civil servant, I pay less or something. Mm -hmm. Just like youth coppers maybe can pay less and all that. So, but you're telling me that you're giving palliatives to families that I don't know. I, I can never understand I can never that. see the families that you're giving the palliatives to. I can to. never understand that because we, if, if we want to grow, right, we need to look for sustainable measures. There's nothing like um, you know, I'll just hand this over to you. And in three months, you, me and you will be looking at our faces and we're like, like what's going on? To your tent, oh Israel. Do you understand if you why? want to die, die. Why? Three months, I, I've done why? my best. We, we need to start to look for ways that we can improve our economy. Um, you know, I, I love the fact that they are rolling out several initiatives, you know, even for food supply and all of that is great. But it should be something wholesome that we know will benefit us later on. Instead, that money that you want to give to 100 families, 100,000 families, because we're not even sure it's going to get to them. You can as well impute it in something else. Or maybe say you want to help farmers. Maybe buy some form of machinery or something that you know that will boost our food production because food is one of the most expensive commodities in Nigeria right now. Most people can barely afford to even eat twice a day. It's, not, it's no longer like a Almost three square Almost 50% inflation square for, for yes. food. Yes, so it, it, it's a lot. Then you need to start to look for what to do because guess what? Even if you're giving them 100,000 naira, 50,000 naira is just, you know, less, is, is by the way, even if you're giving them 100,000 naira, that's just going to maybe be for like a bag of rice and a small bowl of tomatoes. And that's it. So what's going to happen? Guess what? The food inflation is still going to keep rising. And they will still have to use the whole 100,000 naira to still purchase this commodity that is so expensive. So why not? I, I think we're moving backwards. I don't know how why the not reason. Do it, I, I don't why know not do it reason. properly? If, if you had someone who you have just said, okay, I'll give scholarship to this uh, child because the family cannot afford it. Uh, you will give that scholarship to the child till maybe SS3 because you are going to be consistent and your own finances are consistent. But now... If the situation is this bad and you are finding problems, you cannot give that scholarship to the person anymore. That's for one. And the palliatives of the government will not definitely reach that person. Mm. So that means that person has lost more. Mm. So if you're giving palliatives like that to select people, the amount of people it's going to affect are more yes. because the livelihood of people who were doing philanthropy, people who were helping others, has been so bad now they lately cannot that they cannot do much. that anymore. Yeah. And the things that they were doing, government can never do. Mm. So make life easy for the people 
to live. Exactly. And then every other thing will just find its place. I agree. As simple as that. I agree. Okay, our final top trending story says police to investigate the death of former Conga CEO. The Lagos State Police Command has initiated an investigation onto the death of Nick Imudia, former CEO of Conga and CEO of Delight, who reportedly died by suicide on June 25, 2024, by jumping from the balcony of his lecky apartment. Detective from the homicide section of the State Criminal Investigation Department, SCID, have visited this scene and will conduct a forensic analysis. Before his death, Imudia called his U.S.-based brother to give instructions on wealth distribution and his younger daughter to reassure her of his presence. Friends, family, and associates are in shock as the reasons behind his suicide remains unclear. Imudia, originally from Ika South local government area of Delta State, had previously been married to the mother of his young daughter with the marriage ending due to irreconcilable differences. He later remarried a Caucasian before his roles at Conga and Delight. Imudia worked as a regional director for TCL Akatel and as the GM MD for West and Central Africa at Microsoft Device Services. It's quite sad and unfortunate. Yeah. But yeah, I think proper investigation needs to be done. May soul rest in peace, first of all. Amen. Um, but you, there are so many sides to it. First of all, let the investigation be done. Mm. Secondly, let us know that um, uh, mental health is real, mm -hmm. if it really is suicide. We've seen so many people who are well-to-do in court that have taken their lives. And sometimes it's even the rich and wealthy that uh, really do this, and you wonder, uh, what is the role of money in, mm -hmm. in someone's well, life? Happy. So the people who, like we said in the quote, the people who think between your goals and uh, now, uh, there's nothing in between. Uh, it may just be the reason why you get to your goal and then you don't have you the feel time empty. to enjoy. You, you feel, feel empty. empty yes. yeah. So uh, good thing, this is the month of um, men's health. Yeah, which and that's also, what we've been talking yeah, about. We should also today. include mental health mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for men. Men go through a lot of things uh, as men. Everything just, just, just bottled in there and nobody seems to be concerned about what a man is feeling and all mm -hmm. that. So I, I think we should pay attention Definitely. as individuals and then as a community, let's make sure that uh, everybody is, um, is all right. Yeah, you know, check yeah. on somebody, yeah. say Call a nice person. word, you know, mm -hmm. from time to time. Yeah. Let's have our backs. Yeah, we should, because that's just what humans are for. We're supposed to be in communities. We're not supposed to live in silos. We're supposed to be happy together. So it's, it's important that we start to check up on other people as well, ensuring that everyone's mental health is just top notch at the moment. All right. Um, that's sad and yes, um, we, play, we pray that his soul will rest in peace and um, you know we pray that the family will just get the strength that they need at this time. We'll go on a short break, we'll look at the weather and when we return we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.